and welcome to this week's episode of TMA Trucks A to Z. This week we're going to be talking about the much talked about new MASH guidelines and regulations for truck mounted attenuators. So this week what we want to do is go through all the top questions that are being asked. We have some amazing interviews for you. We have a representative from Ashto. We have a representative from Traffics as well as Vidagro that are going to be talking to you about the new regulations and guidelines that are going to be taking effect. So my associate and I are going to be conducting a basic interview of top questions asked and you get to hear the answers. So we're excited. My name is Samantha. I'm the marketing manager here at Royal Truck and Equipment and let's get started. Hi Sam, I'm a Marketing and Business Development Associate here at Royal and I've compiled a list of popular questions that both you guys and I would like to know regarding MASH. So Sam, you ready for your interrogation? I am, let's do this. Alright, so first things first, what is MASH? So MASH stands for Ashto's Manual for Assessing Safety Hardware and it's actually an update to the NCHRP 350 tests that are currently on the market today. So it's an update and test requirements, update on due dates of when things are need to be approved. Okay. Is there any history that we should know about? So MASH came out in 2009. It went over everything and all the new tests that needed to be done on truck mounted attenuator specifically. And in 2016, they did a final update of when companies have to have their attenuators tested by and implementation dates. Okay, so regarding TMA trucks, truck mounted attenuators, yes. when do these MASH guidelines go into full effect? Great question. So December 31st, 2019, the MASH guidelines go into effect. So states across the nation will have that option to then accept approved or non-approved attenuators that either have been tested or not tested. Okay, okay. So if an attenuator manufacturer does not test their attenuators under the MASH guidelines or they fail, mm -hmm. how would a company purchasing these attenuators know? Great. So on FHWA's website, they actually have an entire section of approved attenuators that are on that list. Okay. They would look to the Federal Highway website first to determine if there was a system has been approved or has been issued an eligibility letter. Or they would look to the each individual state to determine if there's any system the states have uh, pre-approved either on a qualified products list. So later on, we're actually going to talk to a couple representatives from the two companies right now currently that have approved attenuators, okay. which is Traffics and Videgro. So it's the Scorpion and the Blade have currently passed those MASH guidelines. There's only those two. Only those two right oh, now. Okay. So when did these companies get their MASH approval letters up on their website? So Traffics is Scorpion was actually June 15, 2017, and the Day Gross Blade actually got up on the website with their approval letter on July 7, 2017. Okay. And how did they let their customers know that they are MASH approved? So Ashley, we did also interview a representative from Videgro. They have the Blade Attenuator also approved here in America. And he can tell us a little bit more about that. All right. Uh, on the product as well, there's a mesh sticker on it, but there's also an FHWA letter that you can find online. So does each state make their own decision on whether they require their attenuators to be mesh approved? Ashley, great question. So this is a bit of a gray area, so let's dive into the facts. Uh, states absolutely 100% have the option to require contractors within that state beginning December 31st, 2019, so New Year, 2020, whether or not that contractor has to use a mash approved attenuator on a new truck purchase. Very important to know the difference. If that contractor within the state has purchased a truck before that December 31st sunset date, they can use that truck in the state. So here at Royal, we actually have contacted DOTs to see if they're gonna be requiring these new mash approved attenuators in their state. We have approvals now from Texas, California, Florida, Illinois, and New Jersey. So you can read and you can also let us know here if you wanna request in what they said to us, um, just so you know for sure. But I think it's better if you hear it from a representative from Ashto. So I'm gonna introduce him now. He'll explain a little bit more about that. As long as the states are not using the monies from Federal Highway Administration on the National Highway System. 
There are regulatory requirements under Federal Highway for funds on the national highway system that it meets the MASH crash criteria, and that has been outlined in the implementation agreement, 2014 MASH ASHTO implementation agreement. And we also would like to know why wouldn't a state use the MASH guidelines? So states, since they have the opportunity to follow certain guidelines that federal government sets, then they can really make their own laws based on the education they know about that product. There are so many products on our highways today, and it's so important, we feel, obviously here at Royal, it's so important that contractors are using the safest trucks and, and products on the highway because it's really a matter of life and death. But if those states are either uneducated or they've got a lot on their plate right now or it's not a, a complete focus for them, they're going to fall back to guidelines and they're going to say, we recommend that they go by the MUTCD or you go by these new MASH guidelines, but it is not a law okay, in a lot of those states. Unfortunate. Yes. Well, and for these companies that currently have non-MASH approved attenuators, what happens if they get in an accident after 2020? In the states that require them? Yes. Okay, so this is a good question. We did clarify this. If, so since each state can make their own laws and their guidelines, this does change from state to state. But if the attenuator got hit and it is deemed irreplaceable, then that contractor does have to purchase a new MASH approved attenuator. If it was a MASH approved, let's say it was from 2012. So Sam, is there anything in MASH that describes what is damage beyond repair? So there isn't specifically a sentence that explains what that is. Each state will have their own guidelines on what they consider damage beyond repair. So you should definitely check back with your DOT. Okay. And we'd also like to know what the biggest difference between the NCHRP 350 test and the new ASHTO MASH test coming out is. Great question. Let's hear from Jeff, a representative from Traffix. MASH came along because it was recognized that the vehicle fleet in the United States had changed enough that Report 350 design devices might not be the best solution on the road anymore. And under MASH, MASH addresses that the change in vehicle fleet. What we're talking about is that vehicles are much heavier. When Report 350 started, the small car, the Geo Metro, was absolutely representative of a small vehicle out there. We really don't have vehicles that weigh the same as Geo Metro's out on the road anymore. There's these very small cars that physically are about the same size, but they're really much heavier. A vehicle like a Toyota Prius weighs 3,300 pounds. They've got batteries and some other stuff, but even other small cars in that family weigh 22, 2,400 pounds. It's tough to find small cars that don't weigh a lot more than a Geo Metro that weighed in at 17 to 1,800 pounds when they were produced. The other side is really much more important for us to understand. When Report 350 was originally conceived and written, the heaviest common passenger vehicle by far on the American roadway was the Chevy Suburban. It weighed more than any Anything else that was normal out there. The Chevy Suburban today doesn't even crack the top 10 of weight vehicles out there that are common on them. And that's really what drove the implementation of that. Under 350, for a TMA, reports 352 and 353 were optional. Because very few people took that option, we really didn't think of it as optional anymore, and most states required it as mandatory. But under MASH, that loophole was closed, and it's now mandatory. So test 52 and test 53 actually test at different angles. So 52, is when you're hitting that attenuator, it's not straight on, but you're hitting it at a little bit off center. So it's straight on, but off center. Test 53, we are hitting it at that angle. That was not in NCHRP 350. Those are the two biggest differences. Great, yeah, that makes sense. So Sam, final question of this interview, and probably the hardest one, is Royal Truck and Equipment going to be building attenuator trucks with non-MASH approved attenuators after December 31st, 2019? That probably is the toughest question. Super simple answer. Royal strives every single day to continue our education outreach about guidelines and about the safest products for the highways. We will continue to do so every single day from today all the way through after that sunset date. We are going to have full stock of both MASH approved attenuators uh, in our lineup for 2019. So we're really excited to have the next level of safety TMA trucks out on the highway. I hope you found this episode super informative. The MASH regulations and guidelines are something that a lot of people don't know a ton of information about, 
myself and my team here at Royal every single day. We're looking for updates on those mass regulations and guidelines per state. So if you have any questions, literally leave a comment below on this video or email us directly in at marketing at royaltruckandcook.com and we will answer that for you. I'd like to thank our representatives that we interviewed today, Keith from Ashto, Herman from Vidagro, and Jeff from Traffics. Thank you so much for your information. It kind of cuts through all the noise that's out there about all these products for MASH. Until next time, thank you guys so much. Comment, like, share, anything so we can keep making educational videos for you guys. See you next time.